Okay, what we're going to do is take a look at some early atomic theory. Now, there are a lot of people who contributed to atomic theory and the development of chemistry and physics. We're going to take a look at a very short uh, history of some main people who contributed to atomic theory. So why don't we get started with uh, Democrates. When you start talking about atoms, the first person who's given credit for talking about atoms is Democrates. And as you can see, this was quite some time ago. Basically, what Democrates said was that there has to be a fundamental unit. In other words, let's, take, let's say you take a bar of gold and you cut it in half. And you cut it in half again and again and again and again eventually you're going to have two pieces of gold you're going to cut those in half and you're going to have one piece of gold and one piece of gold and you can't cut those any further there is a fundamental particle so basically democrates version of the atom looked like that simply one of the sm one smallest piece of a particular piece of matter this went against common knowledge at the time which people thought that matter was what we call continuous. In other words, there wasn't a smallest piece and you could keep cutting forever. Okay, let's move on in our discussion and let's talk about Lavoisier. Lavoisier is arguably the first true chemist. Now many people will say Robert Boyle is the first true chemist and we'll talk about him when we talk about the gas laws, but right now we're gonna talk about Lavoisier. Lavoisier started studying combustion and basically what he was doing was reacting compounds together to see what happened to these compounds after they reacted together. And what he came up with was what we refer to as the law of conservation of mass. If something is conserved, it means it isn't used up. When people talk about nature conservation, what they talk about is not using it up. So anyway, Lavoisier was doing some experiments with combustion and what he found was that, let's say you took hydrogen and reacted it with oxygen and those two compounds came together to form water. If you started with 10 grams total of the reactants, you always had to have 10 grams of products you can't lose mass and you can't gain mass in the process. Now what we do to account for that is we balance equations and we'll get to how we balance those equations a little bit later. The law of conservation of mass states that matter cannot be lost or gained. Atoms are simply rearranged to form new compounds. That's a very important law and you should know that one. So in other words, you're taking the two hydrogens, the two oxygens, breaking those apart and forming water molecules. And Lavoisier did a number of things, but that's what we're gonna focus on here. Lavoisier's experiments led to Proust's law of definite proportions. And we're not gonna talk much about Proust, but basically what that means is that if you have a compound, and let's say water for example, and you have two grams of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen, and we'll talk about how we know those masses a little bit later. But in other words, what Proust said was that water molecules will always form in the same proportion of hydrogen to oxygen in terms of mass. That is also an important law that you should know. Lavoisier's work then led to John Dalton's work. And John Dalton did a number of things, and we will mention his name a few times throughout the year, but what we're going to focus on right now is what's referred to as Dalton's atomic theory. Remember from some previous lessons, we talked about what a theory is. So Dalton's atomic theory is his explanation of how atoms behave. So there's four main parts to Dalton's atomic theory, and they're paraphrased here in the bullets. Basically, Dalton said every piece of matter or everything is made up of atoms. So every element is made up of atoms. So in other words, there are carbon atoms, aluminum atoms, hydrogen atoms, etc. 
Dalton also said the atoms of the same element are identical. In other words, one carbon atom is the same as every other carbon atom. Dalton said atoms then combine to form compounds. So for example, two hydrogens would come together with an oxygen to form water. And from a previous lesson, we know we refer to that as a compound. And Dalton also said that atoms don't change into other atoms. In other words, you're not going to take a carbon atom and change it into a hydrogen atom. What this led to was what we refer to as the law of multiple proportions. Now this one's a little bit more complicated than the law of definite proportions. Basically what it says is, let's say you take two compounds made out of the same elements, carbon and oxygen, carbon and oxygen. What it says is if you have the same amount of the one element in the two compounds, the other elements will have a simple whole number ratio. So in other words, the mass of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide compared to the mass of the oxygen and the carbon monoxide will always have the same proportion. What these laws all led to was the idea that atoms will combine to form compounds. And this led to what we refer to as atomic masses and atomic weights. And again, we'll get to that in a later unit also. All right, let's talk about now what is wrong with Dalton's atomic theory. As we know, atoms of the same element are not identical. And we know they're not identical because of isotopes. And we've mentioned the word isotopes again before. We're going to mention it here again, and we'll talk about them in more detail again in a little bit, uh, a little bit later in a different podcast. Basically, what an isotope are, is are the same type of atom with different masses. So in other words, carbon has three main isotopes, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And they differ by the number of neutrons, but they're all still carbon. And they behave the same chemically. But they are different because of the different number of neutrons. So we know that part of Dalton's atomic theory is not exactly true. We also know that atoms can change into other atoms. And this is what we call, whoops, looks like I spelled radioactive decay wrong. Um, this is what we refer to as radioactive decay. In other words, uranium can decay into, say, thorium or some other compounds. And then thorium can decay into other compounds. And we'll talk about nuclear decay uh, in another podcast in a different unit. So that's a brief history of atomic theory. For what we did was we just covered the major figures in early atomic history. In some future, future podcasts, we'll cover uh, later history.